Good evening, good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study class. I am Pastor Gary Mack here at Shallow Baptist Church. I'm one of the associate pastors here. And we welcome you tonight to my final, my final, closing out this Bible study calling the Finding Your Peace in the Middle of Chaos. We ask you right now if you would tune in with us on Facebook. Uh, our church members, I'm asking you to hit share and like. Please help me to put the word out, pass the word on to somebody who might be in need during this holiday season. You see them in the Christmas spirit. I got my sweater on. I'm ready for tonight. We want to close this thing out. I want to help you find your peace. Like I said, call somebody, get on the phone, text them, come and join in with us on Facebook and also on YouTube. And our YouTube channel is SBC Praise Church and be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Plus, we need your support. We need you to help us push the word of God to the world. Amen. Merry Christmas to you. It's not Christmas yet, but I'm in the Christmas spirit, and I hope that you are too. And we have so much to be thankful for. We're going to close this thing out, like I said, tonight. On the title you see right behind me is Finding Your Peace in the Middle of Chaos. We went over some things last week. We're going to touch on them very briefly. But I do have an answer for you tonight, and I need you to tune in, not just with your ears, but with your heart. Amen? Can we get right in? I'm going to have a quick word of prayer. And I just need you praying with me, those out there, believers, that know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let's pray for the families who have lost loved ones. We have a lot of uh, death in our church family, and we just want to pray, not just for them, but for the world. We know this is not always a great time for everybody. I'm in the Christmas spirit, but there's some things that make me think of mom, those who done passed on and went home to be with the Lord. But, you know, we miss them. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's what we want to talk about tonight, that we have a Savior that brought peace, that peace that passes all understanding, that you and I both can use to carry us through some tough times, some chaotic times. Amen? Father God in heaven, we thank you. Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity that my pastor gave me to share with the audience and with the YouTube family and our Facebook family to share the good news of the gospel. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, and I don't take it for granted. I truly appreciate it, and I pray that someone is blessed through the four classes that we had. And as we close off the night, Lord, I pray you put your stamp of approval on it, that somebody would be blessed, and they will run and tell somebody else about how good God has been to them, how God turned their life around, and how he can turn their life around. So we thank you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Join in with us. Lord, I need you now more than ever, because when your word go forth, Lord, we need you to be with us so it will be sound, it will be clear, and with authority, and most of all, with the boldness that you have given us. Somebody out there sick, and Lord, I'm believing right now for their healing, through the word of God, not through me, not through my voice, but through the word that you have given me tonight to share with your people. And we, we ask all these blessings done in Jesus' name. Let everybody join in with me and say amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, we're going to get started. We're going to jump right into it. Finding your peace in the middle, in the middle, right in the middle of your mess. Finding peace. Somebody out there said, man, you're crazy. Wait, what are you talking about? How can, how can you find peace in the middle of your storm? Well, I need you to look at some, uh, <laughs> some previous message that I taught with the same title. And you'll find out that God uses the enemy and us, the pain that we go through, that leads us to his godly peace. Amen. Chaos. You know what chaos is. Everything that's not right. It's off track. It's, <laughs> it's uncomfortable. It's confusing at times. Make you bitter and angry. Oh, you're in disarray. Your, your mind is not on track. You're not thinking clearly. These are all the things that's chaos. Pain, sickness, pressure. These are the tools. These are the tools that God allowed in our life. God is not trying to hurt us. So if somebody misunderstanding what I'm saying. You missed it if you think God is putting this pressure on because he don't like us, because he's trying to teach us a lesson. Even though we have to reap what we sow. There's some things we've done in our body and our thoughts and our, our minds that we have to reap. 
The word of God says that. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. So don't don't leave that out of the equation. Because that's very uh, much a part of your walk and your relationship with God. That we have to live by the laws of his word. By his grace. By his discipline. By his wrath. By his sovereignty. That is what we stand on. That's what we believe. And through the word of God. That God is a just God. He's a righteous God. And we have to be obedient to what his word says. Can't take half of it and leave some out. We got to leave about the holistic of his word. Amen? Trouble. Here's where I want to start. I want to lay out the foundation. This is where you find your answer. This is where you're going to find your answer. Not in these two verses alone. But as we continue to read, you'll find that your answer. And how do you get your peace in the middle of a storm? Amen? Here's our foundation scripture. This is where we based our, our feet. We plan our feet here. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 said, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving or supplication. Petition, making your request known unto God. With thanksgiving, you want to make your request known unto him and the peace of God. Remember, we're not talking about worldly peace. Worldly peace is only temporal. It's only part-time. It's superficial. It's not real. It won't last. It's not like the peace of God, that meaning when you got trepidation in your mind and in your spirit, you still can rest and sleep good. That's godly peace. Knowing that you put your trust in him and that he will make a way if you believe. Trust in the Lord with all you have. We know these are the things we have to do in order to make it and it's like we have to trust in God and not lean to our own understanding. We, we can't be a member of faith. Faith without, you know, faith without work is dead. We know about the works. But I'm talking about the faith. Hebrews 11 faith. Without it. Chapter, verse 6. Without this faith, it's impossible to please God. That's the faith you got to have to get your peace. You can't see it. It looks bad. It tastes bad. It feels bad. But you got to have faith in God. Mark 11. Verse 22, Mark eleven twenty two. 22, it says, have faith in God. Not in man, not in people, not in the way you feel. Your faith has to be wrapped up in God. Okay? That's the piece I'm talking about. The godly piece. That's what we're looking for. Finding that. That's what we have to find. Not any old peace. You got to really know the definition of godly peace. God said, I got your back. I have you covered. Meaning no matter how bad it looks, you don't have to worry. Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord. Hey, my my cool Santa said, praise the Lord. <laughs> now listen, Moses, see me in Santa Claus, I don't worship Santa. I worship the one I'm talking about right now, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't let this Santa fool you. You see, he got, in, got on glasses. This temporary. It's this, this that peace I'm talking about, that worldly peace. I'm talking about the godly peace. My faith, my salvation. My hope and my trust is wrapped up in the Almighty God. And he sent his son, Jesus. And I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And then when he went home to be on the right hand of the Father, he left his Holy Spirit. Because I had the God that I serve. I ain't serving no Santa Claus. Let's get it straight. I don't know, buddy. All right, let's get back to that. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Your mind would never be able to comprehend the love of God had for us. The mercy he has shown on us. The grace that he has bestowed upon us. That undeserving favor from God. That peace. That will bring you peace knowing that all the sins that we have committed. All the errors that we have done. If we accept him, he has forgiven us. For all that we have done and given us a new path. Called us righteous. Justified us. Sanctified us. If you don't know what real peace is, that's what real peace is. Being blessed and given, granted something. Been pardoned for something you know you didn't deserve. You were guilty. You deserved the worst punishment. But he stepped in. He loved us. I hope somebody feel this. No, no, you ain't that you ain't all that good. No, no. His mercy covered us. And that's what we have to be grateful for. It surpasses all understanding. And he will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus, through the word. We're going to talk about some godly peace. 
Philippians um, 4.17, according to the Bible uh, of God, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding and harmony and calmness of the body and mind. Meaning your body and your mind will be calm. That's the peace. Calm. Hell going on. Everything falling apart. But I have this calm and I have this harmony because my, my connection is with him. My, my source is him. I'm connected to a powerful source that's able to deliver me from all my trouble. To be able to bring peace to my mind and settle my spirit so I can move on even though I'm going through a death. Even though I'm going through lack. Even though I'm going through different type of pressures of the world. A, bi a bad diagnosis or whatever it may be. A wayward child, a child that you, you just rests on your heart. You've been praying for them and trusting God to deliver them and show them the way. And you haven't seen evidence yet. But God still will give you peace that you can rest at night where you won't be up all night. I know I'm talking to somebody out there. God got you. God got you. God got you. What is the peace of God and how can we experience it? That's what we're going to be going to tonight. Not the worldly peace, such as I made it through the night or I got a good night's sleep. No, that's temporary. We talked about that. Um, what I want to start with tonight before I close this thing. Like I said, we're going to close tonight. I'm going to show you through the word of God how you get your peace, how you find your peace. We're going to discover that. If you haven't read your word and seen it, you should already know. But if you don't, we're going to clarify it tonight. The instruction God gives us through his word to have the godly peace that we're all searching for. Amen? All right. Worldly peace. Worldly peace. Not godly peace. Worldly peace can lead us to depression. Here it is on the board right behind me. Worldly peace can lead to depression. Um, Isaiah 41 and 10. It says, fear not, for I am with you. When when you're depressed, uh, I, I you know growing up I didn't I didn't really know what depressed but I heard it, I heard people say they were depressed or they look at somebody oh they must be depressed they're going through, and I I took it so lightly and uh, nonchalant because I wasn't experiencing any depression at that time, anxiety and depression, it can it's, it don't mean the same but it's it's still something that overwhelms you that causes your behavior to change. And when somebody become in the depressed state, they can hear some good information, some good news, even good advice. And it still uh, doesn't resonate in their mind, and their spirit. And they still can walk around in this fog. I know I'm talking to somebody out there experienced. Uh, this might be the light version of it. But somebody who really had depression out there, that really was heavy and felt like, some even felt like taking their own life. That's, how, that's why this Bible study is so important because you got people out there saying, I have nothing to live for. The devil had convinced them that their life is no good. They don't have anywhere to turn to. When God is there, Jesus is there with his hands open wide. said, they that come unto me, you can find rest. But because believers out there could be depressed as well, and because we're depressed, we're not opening up our mouth. We're not letting our light shine before others that they might glorify God. So if, if there's no soldiers out there proclaiming the gospel and telling people about the good news of Jesus Christ and how he turned their life around, being transparent. Because remember, you can throw the word of God at people all day long, but until they see something in you, God uses us as instruments to draw others to Christ. The word is what draws them, yes. But remember, we have been bought into the family. We have been adopted. Not as the world adoption, but we have been bought into the family once we accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord, as our Lord and as our Savior, as God has instructed us to. Now we have the same blessings that the Abraham and Isaac and Jacob had. We had the same, we had the same blessings. And since we have those blessings, that's what people need to see in this depressed world. This world can be very depressing. Look at the news. Look at what's going on in our political field. And look at what's going on in our neighborhood. Look what's going on in different states all over the world. Anger, hatred. Because we don't all think alike. That, 
Lord have mercy. Come on. We have two different opinions, but now you're going to hate me where you hate me so much you, you wish me ill or dead. That, that, that's demonic. You can't fight that with, I'm a good person. You got to fight that on your knees. You need the power of God and his word to be able to set you free and give you that godly peace that you can go on. So you don't have to worry about your life or feeling threatened like if somebody's going to come after me because I don't believe the thing, same thing. Because I don't eat what they eat. Because I don't, I don't do the, or go to places they go. That's what the devil has fooled us and got us so angry. And with so much hatred built up in our hearts. It's even affected some believers where they won't tell people about the goodness. They're walking around depressed themselves. I'm talking to somebody here because I need you to hear what I'm saying tonight. God wants you to have that peace. So when somebody comes to you in need, even though you might be hurt or you might haven't had your prayers answered, God wants you still to be that light. You ought to know that I'm in it for a moment. I'm only in this for a moment. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. And since you know it's coming in the morning, you ought to have the peace of God to be able to deliver a soothing message to somebody who's depressed and feel like giving up. Good God Almighty, I feel like preaching in here. This is, this is where we need to be as believers. We need to get back on our posts. We need to get back in our ministry. We need to get back on our knees. We need to start telling people the importance of a relationship with Jesus Christ, especially now. Yes, we are living in the end times. Yes, we are. But you don't need to worry about the end time as much as you need to worry about your relationship with Jesus Christ. So when he do come, when it is your time, you will be ready. That's godly peace and not worldly peace. World peace leads to depression. Isaiah said it best. He said, fear not, for I am the Lord. This is the Lord speaking. For I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. God is, God is laying this thing out. He's telling us that no matter what you're going through, listen to my word. For I am your God, and I will strengthen you, and I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. My righteous right here, my rights, my goodness, my victory, your blessing, your deliverance. I will hold you up. The good news, the good news, the good news, the good news. Dealing with depression can be scary, but this verse reminds us that with God on our side, there is nothing to fear. Ah, good God of mine. Fear is one of the biggest tools that the enemy use and the biggest oppression there is. Fear describes all of it. Depression is in fear. Anxiety is in fear. Doubt is in fear. Fear is one of the biggest ones. It makes up the whole um, anti-God message for Satan. He's a counterfeiter. He's a, he does the opposite of God. We God wants us to operate by faith. He wants us to live in fear. And I'm not talking about the fear of reverence when it comes down to the enemy. The fear of God, that's the reverence of God, respecting him for who he is. He's God. He's almighty. He's all-knowing. He's all-seeing. He, he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's all that. But the fear the enemy wants us to operate by, it says, fear not. God said, don't go by the fear that Satan trying to throw on you. I'm with you. That fear is what lay dormant in our spirit. It hides in us. And it pulls out its ugly head when we're vulnerable. And how he does it, a bad report of bad information, painful information, a struggle, lack of finances, a financial uh, income. That's the fear. He put that fear over you and said, how am, am I going to make it? Am I leaving here? Am I dying? Am I sick and I'll never be able to join my family again? I'll never be able to go on vacation again. This is the fear the enemy puts in your heart. Fear of standing before others and tell them about Christ. He'll use that. I, I, I still get fearful 
when I stand up. When I mean fearful, I, you know, nervous. I still get very nervous. But there's something on the inside of me called the Holy Spirit that give me that peace, that make me still go on. Even though my pronunciation might not be as clear as an English <coughs> teacher was listening, said a lot of those words are out of place. Yeah, they might be out of place, but I know people can hear my heart because it's nobody but God that brought me this far. And I'm not ashamed of that. If you got to correct my English, that's fine. But one thing you don't have to correct is telling me who saved me, who delivered me. He brought me out of darkness. Who brought me out of darkness to the marvelous light? I knew who that was. And he knew I might have problems pronouncing words, but he still chose me anyway. He still opened doors for me and gave me this opportunity right now to be able to stand before you. What am I saying? Let nothing stop you from telling others about the goodness of the Lord. And I can do that with a Christmas shirt on or not. <laughs> the enemy would try to slow you down, try to trap you, try to clip you up and put that fear in your heart. And the Bible says, according to Isaiah, fear not. God is telling us, fear not, for I am with you. Can I get an amen? You don't have to live a depressed life. You don't, you don't, it's your choice. And the reason why, believers, the reason why I'm saying it's your choice, and I'm hoping believers are watching this as well as the unsaved, but the reason why I keep saying believers because this is the message we need to get out to the unbelievers. We let lead them to know that you don't have to live a depressed life. God made a way. According to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8, this is the NIV version. The Lord himself, verse 8, the Lord himself goes before you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. Come on, y'all. I'm, uh, I'm telling you how to find your peace. These are the things you need to know in order to have that godly peace. You got to know that God is with you. Can I? I know y'all want to hear something else, but I, you start, you're struggling right now. You're living in fear right now. You're living a depressed life. I'm telling you, you got to know God is with you, even though it feels like he's not. Because if he said it, if he said it in his word, it's a done deal. The peace I give you. Remember he said, it, it's beyond your comprehension, beyond your understanding. You just got to believe God when he say that. And he's saying it again in the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord himself go before you and will be with you. And he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Can I get in? He will not forsake you. Do not be afraid. He's telling you, don't be afraid. No matter what it is, don't be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Because I and the Lord is with you. Good God of mine. Ah. What does the Bible say about major depression? Remember last week we talked about controlling your tongue? We talked about that last week. Controlling your tongue will bring, bring peace. Sometimes we put ourselves in a, a bad situation because believers in all, we haven't learned how to control this mouth. Holy Spirit telling you, be quiet, leave it alone, don't say nothing. But no, you have to put your two cents in it. So what you do, you agree, you fight against the Holy Spirit, and you do it anyway, and then you wonder why some of your prayers don't get answered. Pain, God allowed pain, us to go through pain. And what God does, he identifies our weakness through the word of God. He tells us in the book of um, Proverbs, he tells us that life, death and life is in the power of the tongue, chapter 18. He tells us that life and death is in the power, death and life is in the power of this tongue. And we have to be careful because if we keep saying it, we got to live by it. We got to eat of it. Because if we don't learn how to control this tongue, because this, this tongue can pronounce curses as well as blessings. That's why it says, when you enter his courts, we're supposed to enter his courts with thanksgiving, with praises on our lip. So we can offer up blessings unto God. We can even bless people. How you doing? God bless you. I pray that 
God to heal you, deliver you. We can speak, we can pronounce a blessing over people. But we also can not, not just open your mouth, but even as you think. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's with giving and other things as well. It's not just with giving. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If he thinketh evil and negative, and he's entertaining it, and he haven't put the word on it to suppress it or dilute it, or even to cast it out. What you think going to happen? That it will begin to grow in your spirit. And it will become easier and easier to be able to put somebody else down, to insult them, or to humiliate them. And God is trying to say, leave it alone. Watch your mouth. Guard your heart. And do what I ask you to do. Be obedient. So Psalm 37. What does the book... Uh, the question says, what does the Bible say about a major, about major depression? Psalm 34, verse 17 to 18 said, the Lord here, it is on the back. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their trouble. The Lord is close to a broken heart and he rescued those whose spirit is crushed. So for somebody out there tonight saying, I'm hurt. My spirit is crushed. Nobody's been through what I've been through. This is not fair. Look what the word of God says. You're talking about peace. I'm talking, I'm telling you how to find your peace. You can come up with all those excuses. God got an answer for you. But it's in his word. Psalm 35, uh, 34 Verse 17, 18 supports that. The Lord hears his people. Now, I need to stop there. I need to stop there. His people is the ones who trust in him. The Bible says, uh, St. John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave his son to the world, but we know the whole world having received his son. His people, he's talking about for those who received the blessing, those who received the promise. Christ was the promise. Those who received the promise. Those who he, those are the people we're talking about that are his. Those who said, even though I mess up, I'm still going to try my best to be obedient. He's talking about his people. You got you to gotta claim that. I'm, I'm his people. And then when you know you're his people, then you can look at this word, Differently, and you can get up out of that depressed state you're living in. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. Have you come on? Have you found yourself calling on the Lord for help since you've been saved? Today, <laughs> yesterday, day, today, and probably tomorrow. He said, Don't worry about it. I got you. He said, I care about you. I hear you. And I'm with you. He said he will rescue them from all their trouble. All. All. Not some. He said all. This is the godly peace. Because if we look at it in our vein. And what we see. And how we analyze and vision our life. Or do a self-analysis. And say, well, where am I? God said, I see it. I see the real you. I see the you that I chose. Not that one that doubts and live in fear. Not that one. I chose the one that's going to be wit a witness for me. I chose the one that accepted my son. And I chose the one that might be fearful to stand before people, but go anyway. When somebody asks them to pray and not ashamed to be able to pray, even though you don't, you don't know much to say, you don't have to say much. As long as your heart is in the way, Lord have mercy on me. Lord have mercy on them. We got to stop trying to be so politically correct in our prayers to be able to satisfy people and God haven't even, it, your prayer won't even reach the ceiling. Because you're too busy trying to be so correct and sound so educated in your prayers. And God said, I just want to hear what's on your heart. Tell me what's wrong with you. Even when you're praying, Lord, help, help me in my unbelief. I believe. I believe. I do. According to the man in the New Testament, he said, I believe, Lord, but help, help that, that thing I struggle with. Help me when the pressure comes. 
and and I, I get a little antsy and backing backing up and not moving forward. Help me with that. Help me when it becomes not just that prayer, Lord, I'm I'm hungry, give me something to eat. Lord, when that prayer said, Lord, my my child, my child, I, I, like like I I'm not even their parent. I only I only belong. They don't even belong in the family. I don't love them. Or Lord, I, I don't have a place to stay. I don't have nowhere to go. That's that's when you really gotta trust God. And he'll give you that peace. And when the peace comes, that's when you can hear God's words clearly and you can follow his instructions. Today at work, today at work, I was looking over this text and trying to finalize how I'm going to close this thing today with you. And as I was sitting in my office, one of my uh, co-workers came in and shared with me that they needed prayer because they had a loved one that they only gave days or weeks to live. Have you ever been there? I've been there. I've been there. But I always ask the Lord if you can use me in any way, Lord. I want to be used where whatever I say is backed by you and then people can feel. Because I know faith ain't based on a feeling, but God do know what people need when they need it. I, can I get an amen? I, I'm going to say it again. The Lord do know what people need when they need it. Some people do need to feel. Some people do need a touch. And God knows that. And what, when they came to me and they told me they was crying, they, they believe in the Lord. But looking at your loved one and knowing they leaving here, it's tough. Come on, come on. Be holy all you want. Maybe I need to step off this channel because I ain't that holy yet. I'm still going to cry. And, and she was... They were in tears. The young lady was in tears. And what she said, and I had another co-worker in hand, and she said, can, can we pray? And I said, absolutely. I, I know I ain't supposed to do this on my job, and I'm, I'm not doing no open confession, because I've been on my job long enough. They know I'm a minister. And when somebody's hurting, they know exactly what I'm going to do. I thank God for the blessing, how he opened doors for me on my job. And um. This is, this is not telling you not to do your job, but somebody in need, my job always been to try to help or, or bring some guidance, whether that be dealing with work or whether that be doing spiritual. And when the person came and I prayed, and I prayed something that I have been taught and I learned through the word of God. And I thank God for my pastor teaching me this. And I thank God for giving me the wisdom and understanding to receive this. And what I did, I prayed for God's perfect will to be done. We don't want to do that. We want to pray everything else but God's perfect will. And I said in my prayer, and I'll say it again. Lord, if you will, provide a miracle. But Lord, I'm going after your perfect will because I know you know what's best. I felt the peace of God come on me. I really wasn't, I'm going to be honest, I really wasn't too concerned about how well the prayer was going to be delivered to the other person. I knew God heard me. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to somebody here. I, that, that's the peace of God. I knew God heard me through that prayer. And what God did, he pronounced a double blessing on me. Not only did he bless me, and I felt the peace of God knowing that God heard me. That is that is a peace of God. When you know you prayed and God heard you, that's peace. But the other blessing he stored upon me, he gave her peace. She felt peace of God show up in the room. Because God had appointed me. He had anointed me through his word. To not be ashamed when somebody in help to give them him. I didn't give her me. I didn't give her no testimony about look what God and the other person in the room didn't say look what God did for us. At that moment, when somebody's mind was messed up and the enemy was after their peace, you have to give them the word of God. And when I prayed, 
I pray according to the word of God in the name of Jesus. What did I say? According to his word and in the name of Jesus, by faith. And I said, Lord, let your perfect will be done. And that's the best prayer you can pray in any situation. But also in my closing, I said, Lord, allow her and the family to accept your will. You can run around for years and not accept God's will and be angry with him. You can be angry all you want. It won't get you nowhere. You can pout all you want. It won't get you nowhere. But as believers, our job is not just to pray God's will be done, but also pray God to soften the heart so they can receive his blessing or his perfect will, even if it go against what they wanted. I know that sounds tough. But that's the peace of God we're talking about here. Because I believe, and I shared this as well, after I got through praying, I said, listen, you might not accept God's will, or you might not agree with God's will, but I believe when it's all over, when we have to stand before him, that person and you, your loved one and you, at the end, God is going to reveal to us why his perfect will was so important. And I told her, I believe eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. I, I, I know some people, oh, you're taking that out of content. No, I'm just saying, it's going to blow your mind when God show you. I just want you to trust me. I had your back. I had everything covered. Trust in me. I had a reward waiting on that person, and I got one waiting on you. But you got to believe that my perfect will is the right will. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't, I've been there long enough. Let me let me move on. Uh, who are God's people? Who are the people of God? The phrase that the God, the people of God, always indicate a clear relationship. God called Abraham, called him Abram, and later called him Abraham in Genesis chapter twelve to leave his land and. And go to somewhere he had promised him. So Abraham had to trust God by faith and go where God had sent him. Uh, what does 1 Peter 2 and 9 say? means? When it refers to the believers as why doesn't God refer to himself in the plural, in this plural in Genesis 1 to 26? What did God mean when he says, return to me and I will? I will what? I would turn unto you. He telling them, return unto me. Even though you hurt him. Even though things are not going your way. He was telling them, things are not going in the book. He said, turn back unto me. Come back unto me. You walked away from me. You like the way to the world. You allow idolatry and uh, the sins and the joy of the world to turn you away from me. Praising other gods and worshiping other things and being oppressed by the enemy. Turn your hearts back to me. Because God said, I have something for you. I have something in store for those who trust me, those who fear me, those who reverence me. God said, I have something for you. These are God's people. God gives us instructions. He gives us direction. Sometimes it's not clear where we should go, like Abraham. Abraham just went. He operated by faith. And the Bible says Abraham was counted righteous. He was counted as if Jesus Christ had already came on the scene and Abraham accepted his son. That's how Abraham was seen in God's eye. He was seen as a righteous person, right standing with God. God said, I got you. You're connected to me and I'm connected to you. He said, turn back to me, return to me, and I will what? Return unto you. Also, here's another one. But ye are a chosen generation. You got it, God's people. This is who you are. This is who we are. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. God is looking at us as being royal of a priesthood. Lord have mercy. A holy nation. His own special people that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. 1 Peter 2 and 9 
In this verse, Peter gives four descriptions of what God's people are to be. We are to be. We are called chosen. Chosen meaning God selected us. He selected us to be the head and not the tail. He selected us to be victorious. Not to let the enemy trample under trample us under his feet, but we put the trample the enemy under our feet. Can I can I get a witness? He said he gave us authority and power over the enemy. He gave us the ability to cast down those imagination to anything that rises up, up, rises itself up against the knowledge of God. God gave us that authority. He said we can tread on scorpions and don't have to worry about being harmed. I mean, we can go into an area where we not might not be aware of the danger. God said you can walk home because I'm with you. He said, I promise to guide your footsteps. But you got to know that you belong to him. Because if you know you belong to God, you're going to talk to him differently. When you pray, you're going to pray different. When you worship, you're going to worship different. Because you realize that you belong to him and that you are a royal priesthood. I'm going, to, I'm going to pray to my priestly father, the good shepherd, the high priest, the king of all kings, the lord of all lords. That's who I'm going to pray to. The word, the lord of all lords, man of sorrow, the resurrected one, the life, the faithful, and the true witness, the alpha and the omega, the master, the bridegroom. The only begotten, the son, the image of the individual God, the Messiah, the light of the world, the wonderful counselor, the lamb of God, the high priest, the carpenter, Rose of Sharon, the king of the Jews, Emmanuel, the shepherd, the bishop of our soul, the author and the finisher of our faith, the almighty, the I am, the prince of peace, the bright and morning star, the holy one. The amen, the redeemer, the son of man, the bread of life, the beloved, the tribe of Judah, the anchor, the branch, and the way. This is who he is to me. That's why I can say I'm his people. If you know who he is and you believe his characteristics of our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you belong to him, and you have power and authority to be able to oppress. Not, not oppress. You need to oppress those things that oppress you. You need to be able to put them underneath your feet and say, no longer would I live in chaos, but I'm going to walk in my godly peace. I promise you tonight before I close that I'm going to go in detail and show you how how do I get this godly peace? How do I get this godly peace? Well, Philippians chapter 4. How do I get the godly peace? I wrote this thing down. I just want to go over real quick. Uh, if there be any virtue, if you read the rest of this text, chapter 4, read from its entirety. The Bible speaks and says, if there be any virtue. Virtue means Behavior showing high moral standards or goodness or good point, any good points in you. It says, think on these things. Think on these things in your heart. Love, honesty, just, pure, and of a good report. These are the things that in order to find your peace, these are, he said, if any virtue be in you, if any good thing be in you, if any good behavior be in you, if any good points be in you, I need you to think on these things. Honesty. Just pure thoughts. Lovely thoughts. Things of a good report. Paul said, which you have heard and learned and seen from me. Paul was preaching to the Philippians, or Philippi, he was letting them know, don't, don't get caught up on me, even though it looks like I'm, I'm needing something. I have no need of anything, even though you bless me, even though y'all help me on my journey. He said, I don't want you to focus on that. He, he said, but do the things that you see me preach about. Do the things that you hear me talk, that I taught about. And do the things you see me do. Y'all see me trusting God when, when um, they was trying to take my life. 
You seen when they was trying to kill me and tried to railroad me and, 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 and disqualify me, but I still trusted God. I still came back and ministered to y'all. I circled back. I went on several mission, three missionary journeys. I always traveling, but I always came back to see how y'all were doing and to encourage you and send others, co-laborers in the Lord, to encourage you. Paul said, go by what I've taught you, what you've seen and what you learned from me. But most of all, what you've seen me do. Do the same. Paul was saying, because of what you see me do, go through, and what I demonstrated before you, I have seen your spiritual growth, but you lack an opportunity. You let know the opportunity is before you now to be able to share your story, being transparent. I'm closing now. I'm closing here. How do you find godly peace? Paul said, be that instrument. Use your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, which is your reasonable service, according to Romans chapter 12. He said, use your body as a living sacrifice and tell others about the good news, the good shepherd, Jesus, the one who died on your behalf. Paul was encouraging. Don't, don't go through all this confusion, fighting one another and you know, worshiping other gods and, you know, debating over who's right and wrong and, and the Jews right or the Gentiles right. Had the Jew, Gentiles been accepted in the promises, all these things, the run-in he had with Peter. You know, Peter, you know, he accepted the, uh, pre Paul preaching to the Gentiles, but when he got around his Jewish friends, he kind of shunned him and Paul called him out on that. Not, not none of that. But we learn what we learn and what we've seen and what we heard from God's love, that no matter how bad your life is, no matter how bad you've been, God still loves you. That's what I love about this story. He said, you lack the opportunity. But he was encouraging them so they had another opportunity to be able to stand tall and be able to tell people in their region everywhere they go about the good news of the gospel. Not to have spoken or wanted anything from you, Paul was saying. He said, but learn, but learning to be content. <laughs> Can I, <laughs> Paul said, I, I want you, if you, if you don't heard anything, if you, you haven't picked up anything I taught you, learn to be content in no matter what state you are. He said, Pastor Mike, what are you talking about? I'm still talking about this is how you find your godly peace. Whatever situation you find yourself in, you have to learn to be content, steadfast. Stability, stable, sound mind, trusting in God, spiritual eye, seeing that you're delivered even though you feel like you're defeated, being healed even though you feel sick. He, he said, he said, whatever state you find here, be content, be thankful, be thankful, because it's only temporal. It's only going to last for a moment, like the God, the worldly peace, but the godly peace is eternal. Knowing that. My journey until I leave here, God is orchestrating my footsteps. God is going to be the one that deliver you and me until we stand before him. That's why he was telling them to be, be of good cheer and to be content, no matter what state they had. Because I'm all right. I'm faithful. I'm satisfied. I'm okay. With all I have to go through and who I am, I'm content. And learn how to be obese and learn how to be abound. Meaning to be humble and to be plentiful or to be lack or whatever your state you find yourself in. Learn to trust in God and believe in him and knowing that he will deliver you. I'm closing here. And I'm going to close right here. I'm going back to the foundation group. How can I find Peace in the middle of the I told you. If you got any virtue, if you got any goodness in you, think on the godly things. Stop letting the enemy bring all this trash in your mind because if you bring it in your mind, it's going to get in your spirit and it's going to interrupt your peace. I hope you hear me tonight, Shiloh family. I hope you hear me tonight, world. I hope you hear me tonight, father. I hope you hear me tonight, wife. I hope you hear me tonight, daughter, son, brother, uncle. I hope you hear me tonight. 
if you're trying to find peace in the middle of chaos, you can find it through the very gift that God gave you. If there be any goodness in you, and which I know it is, because if you're listening to this message tonight, there's some goodness in you. God has found it. He's pointing to you. Think of those things. If it's going to be depressing, cast it out. If it's going to pull you or somebody else down, get rid of it. Fight to get rid of it. But these are the things I need you to stand on. You stand on, I have to be the shepherd of my life. God was my shepherd. According to Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I don't have to want it. But now God has made us shepherds to be to lead others. And as lead others with that right, righteous hand as God has given us. He's given us the blessings. His blessings are yea and amen. And in order to be successful, when I mean successful, be fruitful. And to be in the army of the Lord and satisfying unto God. We have to work while it's day. Because at night no man can work. We can't get distracted. We can't have no distraction. He will keep you in perfect peace. Who mind it stayed on him. Now, Hebrews 13 20. So now may God of peace, who through the blood of eternal covenant brought you back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd and the sheep. These are all the powers and the promises that God has stored upon us. And also, one thing I want to close with again, like I said, I'm going back to the front page here. Where we started out at. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing. Now this scripture ought to mean something to you. And my closing, we're going to close right here. Pray and believe. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything through prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God. There it is. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. I'm Pastor Guy Mac, and I want to thank you for letting me be in your home tonight. I just want to say that I love you, and I pray that you found something in this word that bless you. During this holiday season, I would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a prosperous and a safe New Year. Pray for somebody else. If you want to be blessed, if you want your next year to be blessed, to so start out right, pray for somebody else. Intercede for somebody else. Stay on your knees. And when you pray, believe in God. Even though you might not see it, you got to step out on faith and believe that God is going to turn things around on your behalf. you got to know by faith that God is the only one that can deliver this world. And he uses vessels like you and me to be that light shining in the midst of darkness. And we got to trust him with everything we have and find that godly peace that surpasses all understanding. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Until we meet again, I'm Pastor Gary.